Welcome back. This is a screencast for the unit You're Surrounded, Unit 3, You're Surrounded. We're going to look at ideal gas laws. Uh, I want to read something about ideal gas laws. This came from a website called chemguide.cu.uk. Um, and this is what it says about uh, ideal gas laws. It's based off of uh, kinetic theory assumption about ideal gases. Uh, there is no such thing as an ideal gas, but many gases behave approximately as if they were ideal at ordinary working temperatures and pressures. Real gases um, are dealt with um, at another level of chemistry. We're not really going to talk about real gases uh, at Chemistry 300 here. Uh, assumptions. Gases are made up of molecules that are in constant random motion in straight lines. The molecules behave as rigid spheres. Pressure is due to collisions between the molecules and the walls of the container. All collisions, both between the molecules themselves and between the molecules and the walls of the container, are perfectly elastic. That means that there is no loss of kinetic energy during the collision. The temperature of the gas is proportional to the average kinetic energy of the molecules. Alright, so that's from the kinetic theory uh, that you learned about earlier. And then there's two uh, absolutely key assumptions because these are the two most important ways in which real gases differ from ideals. We want to focus in on that ideal gases. There are no intermolecular forces between the gas molecules. And the volume occupied by the molecule themselves is entirely negligible rel relative to the volume of the container. So just things that you might want to go back to, jot down, have in your notes, uh, and we'll discuss, and as we move through the screencast, you should be able to maybe piece together some of the ideas that um, that little reading that I just shared with you can help you with understanding ideal gas laws. Let's get started here. What we want you to do is take a deep breath and then think about it. I want you to brainstorm why it is extremely difficult to climb Mount Everest, which stands at over five miles above sea level, without bringing along a tank of oxygen to breathe. And that's what this individual is showing you here. Um, I'm going to use the pointer to point it out. <laughs> uh, this is their gas mask. This is uh, probably a CO2 catcher and then tucked inside their bag or their jacket is the CO2 tank and this is looking at um, the Himalaya uh, mountain range. But, but ponder this, what, what would cause it to become very difficult to breathe oxygen um, or to breathe it entirely at, at this great height, five miles above um, sea level uh, and why Oxygen tanks are now the customary practice in climbing Everest. All right, I'm going to move on. Counting gas particles. We're going to have to talk about uh, this gentleman, Avogadro, an Italian scientist, and some of the things that he came up with. Gas particles are super small, and they're difficult to count, so we use a unit called a mole which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of any gas. See? Particles in this case will equal atoms or molecules. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd also represents Avogadro's number. And how did he come up with this? Avogadro pictured moving particles as occupying a small portion of the larger space apparently occupied by a gas inside a container. Thus, the volume of the gas is related to the space between the particles and not to the particle sizes themselves. Because as you should understand, different matter has different size atoms that gives it a larger size. And if we're looking at this gas, it's not the size of the particle, it's the space between the particles that would determine their volume. What Avogadro did is he imagined three balloons filled with different gases, helium, argon, and exon. These gases are listed in increasing particle size, with exon being the largest 
atom. According to Avogadro's hypothesis, the balloon filled with one mole of helium, that would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of helium, will occupy that same volume as the balloon filled with one mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of exon gas. So he's able to think and, and work this out and do a couple experiments. So he came up with the fact that volume will be equal to number of moles. And we represent number of moles throughout our equations with an N. And we'll come back to that. Avogadro's Law. Equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contains equal number of particles. That's what I just stated in the last slide. Same temperature, same pressure, equal volume. Regardless of the gas. If a gas is at standard temperature and pressure, and we define that as standard pressure is one atmosphere, and standard temperature is 273 degrees Kelvin. One mole of gas particles at STP occupies a volume of 22.4 liters. All these different gases, helium, or I'm sorry, hydrogen, helium, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, all different size, uh, atoms that make up these molecules, all at standard temperature and pressure, all have 22.4 liters or a mole of gas in that container or space. Your turn. Think about this. You have five moles of CO2 molecules, carbon dioxide molecules, at standard temperature and pressure, that's STP. What volume do you have? Show your work. So pause it, jot down what you think you're, show us your mathematics to figure that out, bring it to class and share your answer with your teacher. Back to Mount Everest. Take a deep breath. Could the difficulty breathing have to do with the number of oxygen molecules av available at that altitude? As we go higher in the sky, do we have less air available to us? How can we calculate the number of moles of gas particles as we move through the atmosphere? Is there a gas law that can help us do this? Ideal gas law relates pressure, volume, temperature, and the number of moles of a gas sample. Here's the formula. I would write this down. Pause the screen, write this down, or screen capture it. Oh yeah, and all these um, Lecture notes are available on the Google Doc, so you can just take your notes directly onto these pages if you find that in the Google Docs. But we have P is represented to pressure, V is represented to volume. We've seen these in our Boyle's Law calculations. Uh, N, as I said earlier in this video, is represented to the number of moles that we have. A new thing that's coming up is the gas law constant that re is represented by a, a capital R, and there's two gas law constants that we're gonna to have to use, which is relevant to our pressure units. And then we have temperature, which means we're gonna to have to probably convert to Kelvin when we do these calculations. R represents gas constant, const, constants dependent on pressure units, as I just said earlier. Here's one of them. If you see atmosphere as your pressure units, you use this as your calculator for here. Okay, it gets plugged into the equation for the R here if your pressure units were in atmospheres over here. Kilopascals, so 
3314 liters for times kilopascals over mole per Kelvin would be the R that you would plug in here if your pressure units are in kilopascals. So, let's look at how you would solve a question like this. How many moles of air are in 0.5 liter breath on top of Mount Everest? The pressure is 0.33 atmospheres and the temperature is 254 Kelvin. It's a good idea to always write down your given so then you can easily identify what you don't have. So we've written down pressure as 0.33 atmospheres as described by the question. We've identified our volume at half a liter as identified in our question. It started out in the question about how many moles of air. So that's your N. So that's your question mark because there's no number given to us. Our pressure units are in atmospheres. So we use the gas law constant shown here. And then it tells us that our temperature is at 254 Kelvin. So formula work. We rearrange the equation that we had on the last screen. I'm going to go back here for a second. We rearrange this equation to isolate N. So some simple algebra to get rid of that. It's a lot easier to do this without your, your numbers plugged into it and just move these symbols. So we end up with N is equal to P times V divided by R times T. And that's what that equation looks like. And I left the units in here because um, I don't want to have naked numbers. So what we can see is that atmospheres can cancel out. Liters can cancel out. Our Kelvin temperatures will cancel out. And we're only left with moles. Your turn. Suppose you have one mole of gas molecules in 22.4 in liters at STP. Describe three ways that you can get a gas pressure of 0 0.50 ATMs. Come up with a couple ideas, return to class, and share that information with your teacher. This has been a screencast over ideal gas laws. Uh, review this, review your packet information, and ask questions in class, and we'll see you soon.